This really is, this really is one of my favorite days all year, uh, which is weird to say about Good Friday. Let me read our scripture for today. It's Luke chapter 23, verses 32 through 46. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out to be executed with him. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also came and mocked him. They offered him wine, vinegar, and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was written a, a notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you're under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then Jesus said, or then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon. And darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he said this, he breathed his last. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Repentance. Y'all already like me. I can start a sermon like that. <laughs> You've actually heard me talk about repentance more than just about anybody else, because that was one of the topics Larry always gave to me. But it makes sense. You know, Larry, the senior pastor has to do the, has to talk about the finances of the church, has to talk about money. You can't be talking about money and repentance. We're not Baptist. <laughs> But I really don't talk about repentance much, uh, partly because a lot of the pastors that talk about repentance all the time are usually telling others what's wrong with their life, and not always dealing with what's wrong in their own, partly because I know I'm forgiven, like I, God's grace has worked in my heart and I don't think that much about, the, about repentance, I think about God's grace and forgiveness, but partly I don't talk about repentance much because I'm personally kind of bad at it. <laughs> There's a way that I, I, I talk about it. If you, if you remember me preaching about repentance, um, you remember that uh, what I would always, I was always talk about the Hebrew word for repentance, which is shuv. And shuv means to turn around. It means to change direction. So it, it's an action verb. You're, you, shuv is if you're walking this way, that's it. That's, that's repentance. You're, you're going away, away, you see a mistake, you stop making that mistake. And that, that's the way that I understand it. I'll, there's times that I, I was like, whoa, that did not go well. I don't want to do that again. And I can change my behavior. But there's, a, there's another word in the Bible that we translate as repentance. The Greek word for it is metanoia. <coughs> metanoia means to change your mind. Metanoia means to change your motivations. Metanoia means to get at the heart of why. Why did I do this thing that doesn't make any sense and wasn't very helpful? You can skip the mistake, and, and, and sure, others are going to like it if, you, if you're able to shoo, if you're able to change and, and not do it again, but if you don't do the deeper work, you're just going to make some other version of the same mistake. And that deeper work is hard, and because you're looking at yourself, you realize like, oh, well, I made this mistake because of like this thing in me that I've misunderstood or misdirected or, you know, I, I've got some kind of... You know, something, I, you know, maybe I acted out of woundedness, maybe I acted out of fear, maybe I acted out of anger, you know, but and you're going to be wounded again, you're going to be afraid again, you're going to be angry again, and then you start looking at what made you angry or what the fear, where the fear comes from, and you start looking at, like, there's the problems in our broader society and the influences that we've been hit with, and you're like, I know... I'm not, I'm not a racist and I'm not a sexist, but I also know that our culture has taught me some prejudices and some assumptions that aren't helpful. I've had to work pretty hard to get over some of this stuff in my life. But then if it's, if it's a broader societal problem, 
or public policy problem. They look really hard. It can look frustrating. It can look impossible to change our minds. And sometimes that's the point. Because the hard stuff is real and God is in the middle of the hard stuff too. Think about how the disciples felt when they took Jesus down from the cross. Palm Sunday had offered so much promise. They'd given three years to following this guy. They'd given up everything. The words that Jesus spoke are like, if you want to follow me, you've got to give up. You've got to give up everything. You've got to turn away your parents. You've got to go. And all of that stuff, he's describing what the disciples had done. They had followed him. They had let go of everything. And they said that this is our teacher. This is our guide. This is our Messiah. This is our Lord. And everyone else started to notice. And they waved the palm branches and they laid them on the ground and they shouted, Hosanna. And now they're taking his body down from the cross. that they felt loss, fear, anger. Everything looked impossible. And when we look at the cross, that's what we're supposed to see. At least sometimes. We're supposed to see that the human way of collecting power and possessions and using it against others, that that way leads to death. The human idea of seeing something we're afraid of, like the Sadducees did, or the Romans did, or the Pharisees did, somebody who's calling us out, somebody who's challenging us, seeing that and deciding that, that violence is the answer, that force is the answer, that this way leads to the death and the death of innocent people. We're supposed to see our need for repentance. But we're also supposed to see God's radical readiness to forgive. Because there were two men executed with Jesus, guilty of the crimes they were sentenced for. The man who asked Jesus for forgiveness says, I am guilty. I deserve to be up here. Whatever he had done was deserved the sentence of death. And he just says, Jesus, remember me. Jesus says, you'll be with me in paradise. You know what I think sparked that conversation? Was a thing Jesus had just said just before that. Because Jesus looked down at the men who had just sinned against him personally. The men who had taken a hammer and nail to him. The men who had put a crown of thorns on his head. He looked at those men and he said, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. We can know that God loves us. We can know that God forgives us. We can know that when faced with violence and death and pain and injustice and harm face to face, God says, forgive them. And that's why we repent. Because we can trust that we're going to be forgiven for it. And we can trust that God has a way that's better than our way of force. Whether that's the force of violently attacking somebody else or the force of just, I'm going to try really hard and I'm going to get this right. God has a better way. We repent because we believe in God's radical willingness to forgive. And we repent because we know, we know that new life is coming. We know that when it's dark, the light is on the horizon. So sometimes we do the hard things. Sometimes we take a look at ourselves and we take a look at the world around us and we take a look at what's going on not because there's something not because we are bad but because there's hope to be more of a blessing to the people we love 
Pray with me. God, this morning, we can pray but two things. I'm sorry. And thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all.